China has said it is set up to strike U.S. military powers who endeavor to dock their maritime ships in Taiwan. In an emphatic publication distributed by Huangyu, Global Times, Chinese authorities say they would consider U.S. powers positioned in Taiwan to be a move towards Taiwan independence. Huangyu.com reports, on August 14, 2017, the U.S. Place of Representatives passed the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2018. It contained a thing to permit the warships of the U.S. and Taiwan to dock at each other's ports. The bill will go to the Senate for thought. After the House and Senate accommodate any distinctions, the President will sign the bill into law. In the event that China does not have any significant bearing and adequately solid weight, to stop it, it is exceedingly plausible that the bill will move toward becoming law. The U.S. pulled back its military powers from Taiwan in 1979 when China and the U.S. set up conciliatory relations. On the off chance that the new guard approval charge moves toward becoming law, it would imply that the U.S. military powers can legally come back to Taiwan. Albeit maybe a couple warships stocking at a port in Taiwan might be just representative under the present circumstance in the Taiwan Strait, the development of U.S. warships will fill in as a kickoff to Taiwan freedom. It is difficult to state that this will be the last piece of the U.S. Taiwan military participation. Who knows what other, more risky activities the birds of prey in Washington may take later on. Obviously there is likewise another probability. Regardless of the possibility that the U.S. Congress passes the bill, the U.S. government may not send warships to dock in Taiwan. Rather, they may simply utilize the bill as a chip to undermine China, which will unavoidably expand the cost for China to keep up its relations with the U.S. It will likewise place China in an aloof and negative position in the Sino-U.S. vital diversion. Consider it. On the off chance that U.S. destroyers go to Taiwan. Would we be able to not isn't that right? What about U.S. plane carrying warships going to Taiwan? Imagine a scenario where they dock there, not for a couple of days, but rather for half a month, a couple of months, or on the off chance that they don't leave Taiwan. Additionally, imagine a scenario in which it is not a typical stop and dock, but rather U.S. warships come to Taiwan at whatever point the connection between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait ends up plainly exceptional. What if the U.S. indeed, even sets up an army installation for the U.S. Marine Corps at the port of Kaohsiung? We likely need to look a few stages ahead before making one stride on the issue of the U.S. warship stocking at Taiwan's ports. In the event that the U.S. can make a couple of strides a while later that China totally won't acknowledge, at that point, around then, China may need to take part in a standoff to stop it. At that point China should simply act now to draw a red line for the U.S. What's more, Taiwan. One may state that the underlying driver of the Taiwan issue, a conceivable split from China, is the U.S. It bodes well, yet we ought not take it to the extraordinary. Would Washington have passed such a protection approval charge amid the Maying Jiao period? Regardless of the possibility that it had passed, would it have been helpful? Would the Kuomintang government have respected the docking of U.S. warships? Editor's note, Ma Ying Jia was Taiwan's president from 2008 to 2016. The creator is suggesting that Ma Ying Jia and his gathering, the Kuomintang, were expert the one China approach, so this sort of issue would not have happened and furthermore that the present Taiwan president Tsai Ing-wen and her gathering, the Democratic Progress Party, DPP, are professional one China and one Taiwan. Hence this issue would come up. From the phone call amongst Trump and Tsai Ing-wen to the U.S. Congress advancing that U.S. warships dock in Taiwan, Tsai's organization has assumed a key part. Tsai seems, by all accounts, to be delicate and delicate, however she is colorful from her bones. Through a few conciliatory activities, mainland China has hosed her self-importance. In any case, Tsai and her associates obviously have not educated their lessons yet and even endeavor to counter back. The possibility of a U.S. warship stocking in Taiwan bears the shadow of this counterattack. It must be brought up that the U.S. warships coming back to Taiwan will be the most unsafe and serious moving down of the Taiwan freedom development in decades.
it will be an activity that will really change the norm in the Taiwan Strait. In the event that Tsai Ing-wen and the U.S. resound each other and make this stride, at that point she will be further down the Taiwan Autonomy Way than Chen Shui Bian, President of Taiwan from 2000 to 2008, who was additionally from the DPP. China reprimanded him seriously to attempt to take Taiwan toward autonomy. It is a long way from enough just, for China, to apply discretionary weight on the Tsai Ing-wen specialists. It is by all accounts basic, for China, to expand its military weight on Taiwan. In addition, for U.S. warships to dock in Taiwan, all by itself, is a military activity. In the event that mainland China does not react utilizing military means, the current political and military existing conditions in the Taiwan Strait will undoubtedly be changed. We advocate that mainland China should see the U.S. warship stocking in Taiwan as an infringement of China's regional honesty and power. Beijing ought to consider taking a progression of measures to react and make them open. Those measures ought to incorporate a military strike against Taiwan's maritime ports where U.S. warships would dock. On the off chance that Taiwan counterattacks, the People's Liberation Army PLA, will complete a moment strike against Taiwan. On the off chance that the U.S. warships take part in Taiwan's counterattack, China will fire back to sink the U.S. warships. We are not going to push for a presentation of war against Taiwan and the U.S., yet to advocate an unmistakably drawn, China's, primary concern on the Taiwan Strait issue, under no situation can the U.S. military powers stop at Taiwan. Regardless of whether the two sides of the Taiwan Strait need peace or war is up to the decision that the Taiwan experts make. The principles of the diversion in the Taiwan Strait can't be this way, regardless of how forceful the Taiwan specialists are, Taiwan is sheltered. The Taiwan Strait issue must have a genuine red line. When Taiwan experts touch the red line, it will be done. China is focused on a serene ascent however should have the metal to battle. Just thusly can our monetary and military power be changed into an effective obstruction to the Taiwan autonomy powers and to the outside, unfriendly, powers, and just along these lines can the red line we draw be considered important. Sighing when experts don't set out to battle with mainland China. If the PLA assaults military offices on Taiwan Island, Taiwan will be in bedlam. Their gathering, the DPP will be removed. So once mainland China declares that U.S. warship stocking in Taiwan will prompt military strikes, Tsai experts will back off. In 2005, mainland China passed the anti-secession law, yet the Taiwan experts gave careful consideration to this law than they did to the Taiwan Relations Act that the U.S. passed. The time has come to wake Taiwan up to look at its words and deeds against the anti-secession law.